So it's been nearly seven years since Tech and Seven launched. Uh, it was such a long wait. How are you guys feeling? You're at the finish line now. You're just nearly at the end. How does it feel? どんな気分か。でももう、こんな早く1月が来るとは思わなかったな。もう早く。もうなかったのもあるけど、どっちかってなんか昔は日にしラインがあったんだよね、本当に。うん、なんかこういうインタビュー受けてるタイミングって、も
、その、ブームになっちゃったから、終わりだ、終わりだって言ってた割には、結局、あのー、すごく長く続いてるし、すごくプレイヤーも増え続けているジャンルになってること自体は喜ばしいし、もっと言うと、その、結局、モータルコンバットその、ストリートハイターにしてもギルティギアとか次出るプロジェクト L にしろ全部 2D 格闘ゲームなんですよね。一軸の。で、僕らは 3D 格闘ゲームで、ファイティングゲームやってる人からすると 2D と 3D ってだいぶ違うゲーム、もう違うジャンルにぐらい言われちゃってるんで、僕らがすると同じ 3D のジャンルに競合がいないんですよ。これはちょっと寂しいので、正直言うともっと 3D ファイティングのジャンルで、えー、ライバルっていうのが出てきてほしいし、もうむしろねえ、バーチャファイターが今頃、もうナインを出してて、僕らより売れてるみたいな状況があった方が僕らは燃えるので、そういう状況を早くなってほしいなぐらいに思ってますけどね。だからプレッシャーとかはほとんどない。So、that he doesn't feel a lot of pressure. I mean, back in the 90s, there was a lot of fighting games at that time too. And it seemed like the average fan would say, oh, it's, it's, a, it's a boom. And then, oh, it's not a boom anymore because there's not As many fighting games, but for us, it, it didn't really matter because、uh, there's a Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat that you mentioned came out recently, but、uh, those are both 2D fighting games, as is Project L, which is another one a lot of people are probably looking forward to.、Um, but 3D fighting game, Tekken is the only one that's really relevant still. And, right? And so it's actually kind of、uh, lonely. It's, it's almost、oh, like、oh. we would hope to have a rival to you know, help us.、Uh, Make the genre more exciting, I guess you could say, right? Is、uh, his answer. Or for me, though, I, I'm a fighting game fan. So、uh, I loved fighting games before I joined the company. So for me, it was exciting that we're seeing a new Street Fighter and that、mm. we're seeing a new Mortal Kombat.、Um, the good thing is that、uh, you know, we have a good relationship with Capcom.、Um, we don't have a lot of communication with Warner. So I don't know how it happened, but they're at a very good interval. So it's Street Fighter comes out. Uh, a little bit of time until Mortal Kombat comes out, and a little bit more time until Tekken comes out. So I think it worked quite well that I think fighting games as a whole, people are like, oh, wow, this is exciting. Street Fighter. Oh, awesome. Let's play Mortal Kombat. And then, you know, a lot of those people are going to be like, oh, sweet. Tekken's coming out. Let's, let's play Tekken. So for us, I think it's just super exciting that、uh, we're at this time where everyone's releasing it in the same window. but Uh, it's not exactly at the same time. So it's worked out quite well. And when you go to a, like an EVO or one of these big events, I think it's just going to draw a lot more numbers of people、uh, because the games are still fresh at the same time, right? Yeah.、Um, so one of the most notable things about Tekken 8,、uh, something I couldn't really believe, is that h i a c h i s actually dead, right? <laughs> what, what was that like, though, approaching it as if like, that's the final straw? Maybe it's not, but. h i a c h i s in the. フランチャイズの顔を長くやったけど、うんそうね、死んじゃってどういう気持ちになるのか、うん、まあ何回か死んでるって話、うん、<笑>そうですね。<笑>まあでも少なくとも、その、我々行き当たりばったりでストーリーを作ってるわけじゃなくてこ、この運命自体は結構前からもう決めてはいたことなので、あの、それで言うともう物語は先に進んでるし、あの、彼が不在でも鉄拳8って、もう、ものすごいこう盛り上がる物語内容にして、すごく未来にもつながる話にしているんで、ストーリー上は僕はそこは心配してないんですけど、まあ、ただ、一個だけ僕が計算外があるとしたら、ストーリー上、平八が、その、セブンでやられるっていうことまでは決まってたんですけど、その、現場のチームの人たちが、あの、ストーリーモードをもう一回やってもらったら分かると思うんですけど、最後本当に平八完全にやられてるんですよね。完全に死んだとしか思えないような描写になってるんで、うん、まあ、あれが思えばかなり決定打だったのかな。だからもう完全に平八は死んだってことにしない限り、これはちょっともうど,どうしようもないなってぐらいの表現になったのは、僕もあれは意外でしたね。<笑>はい。まあでも、あの、ショックというか、まあ、あの、それ以上に未来の話が。So, Heihachi obviously was a popular、uh, face of the series, like you said.、Um, but it, it's not like we decide the story on the spot each time. It's like、uh, there is an overarching story that we plan、uh, for a while into the future, right? So, it was already kind of decided before Tekken 7 that Heihachi was going to meet that fate.、Uh, and so, 
it's also decided that the store for Tekken 8 is still going to be exciting and it's going to continue and uh, it's going to be fine without Heihachi because we've plotted it that way. Uh, that said, Harada was a bit surprised at how Heihachi died because uh, you know he was like he knew Heihachi was going to die, but the way that the the uh, you know Nakatsu or or the designers or whoever uh, decided to portray it was pretty pretty. Uh, it leaves no room for misinterpretation, right? It's like he's pretty dead at the end of <laughs> the story, right? So Harada was kind of surprised that it was like no escaping that, right? The way that you show him in that in that fashion, so yeah, so we might not have Heihachi, but we do have Jun, who is back after a long really time. long time. Mm. What was that like? That's like such a big thing for fans. Jun no more to come, but so so it's like, do you keep it? Ah, so is it? Ah, no, Jun was, eh, to, 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 オープニングムービーは良くないと思うんですけど、アーケードの時から入ってるあの、オーガーが首持ってる。あの首って、純の首とかではないんですよ、実は全く。あの、オーガーの怖さを象徴するために、こう、ああいうもああいう、誰の首かわかんないものを持たせただけで、純の首ではなかったんですけど、あれも純の首だと思った人が、こう、純が殺されたって思い込んでて、で、風間純も殺されたと思い込んではいたんですけど、僕ら的にはずっと、行方不明だって、そう、消息不明だって言い張ってたんですけど。ね、だからもともと出すつもりがいたんですね。で、まあちょっと思ったより遅くなっちゃったんですけど、まあそれやっぱりちゃんと出したら、うん、長い間待ってくれてたファンの人がすごい喜んでくれてるんで、それ自体はすごい良かったし、今回も結構キーとなるキャラクターなんで、ちょっとそこのストーリーモードは期待してほしいなと思ってます。はい。それもあって、アニメではそんな死んだっていう表現になってないもんね。なってないんだけどね。<笑>うん、<笑> so, It's, um, it's interesting, the whole story revolving Jun, because、uh, Tekken 3 is when the whole events took place on Yakushima with Ogre and all that. And、uh, we never really said that she was killed or anything like that, but a lot of people thought she died. And it might be one of the reasons is the, one of the, the movies in Tekken 3, I think, shows Ogre with someone's head or whatever. But It's clearly not one particular character. It was just designed to be like he's a scary person, so he has a head. But some people probably link that to June and, oh, he's got June's head and she must be dead, et cetera.、Uh, but we never really said she was dead. It's just she's been absent for such a long time. And、uh, so it was really exciting to be able to bring her back because she is one of the fan favorites. And I even mentioned that if you watch the anime, it's, it's a lot clearer that she's like disappeared, right? Right. So, So it's, it's been great because people really, there was a lot of people asking for her to return. It was nice to be able to bring her back,、uh, including how she's portrayed in the story. Speaking of returning characters,、uh, one of the things that surprised me the most, how many characters had a redesign.、Uh, there are two I want to bring up in particular. Kuma, or in Heiachi's gear, like that broke the internet when we all saw that. Like, how can you guys do that to us? <laughs> well, no. 復活から言うと、うん、みんなそれぞれ結構デザイン変わってて面白くて、そ,、ね、その中でもクマが A8 の衣装をまとって、うん、なかなか発表時にインターネットがいたんだけど、うんうん。あの、結構ね、まあファンもよく見てくれてるなと思うな。まあ我々もその復活キャラというか、まあ、シリーズの定番キャラクターを、すごいリフレッシュもさせたいけど、誰かわからなくなるぐらい変えちゃうと、本当にグラフィックもモデルも全部作り直してるんで、誰かわかんなくなっちゃうんで、アイコニックな部分を残しつつリフレッシュするっていうのはすごい難しくて、まあ、今回かなりそういう意味で言うと、うまくこう、リニューアルも図れて、あ新規感もあ,れあって、ちゃんとそのキャラのアイコニックなとこ残せてるなっていうところで言うと、クマは逆にとやりやすい部類ですよね。もう顔が絶対どう見てもクマなんで、結構大胆なことがしやすいっていう意味で言うと、まあ今回は、あれは結構現場から出てきたアイデアでもこういうふうにしたら面白いんじゃないかってああ、これはインパクトあるねってのですぐ決まったアイデアではありましたね。クマは quite interesting, you know, because we remade the character models from scratch.、Um, depending on the character, it's very tough because we want to make them look totally unique and, and renewed, but at the same time, you have to keep their essence so that people will still recognize the character. But、uh, that said, it was easier for Kuma because he's a bear. And you know, if he's a bear, then people will know, oh, that's Kuma. 
Um, and the idea about having the uniform, et cetera, that he has is something that came from, uh, you know, the, the actual staff working directly on it. And uh, when that came up, you know, Harada was like, yeah, it's pretty cool because uh, the fans, they really notice these little attention to details and they really pick up on it. So it's a good way to, to make him look new, but to still keep that essence that, that uh, people can relate to. Yeah. Uh, クマ問題なのは、あれ、結構、ファンが拡大解釈してて、結構、その、死んだ平八の、その、形見をか身につけて登場してるっていう、こう、死んだ恨みの敵、平八の恨みを晴らすために、ああいう格好してるんだ、みたいなことをファンが言ってくれてるんですけど、普通に考えて、あの、人間のサイズじゃないわけじゃないですか、あれって。あの、どう見てもね、クマサイズに作られてる、新たに作られた道着でしかないはずなんで、あれ、あの、ストーリー設定上はあ、あいつの道義とかを作ってるやつは誰なんだっていうね。あいつ自身が作れてるわけじゃないので。そういう店があるかもしれない。<笑>どこであれは作られてるんだっていうのはちょっと未だに僕はな謎なんですけど、あえて自分ではあの、外には言わないようにはしてたんですけど、それ未だにちょっと疑問ですね。うちの海外反社作ってあげたのかもしれない。うん、そうなんだ。<笑>あとあれじゃないみんな熊って、なんだろう作りやすいように思えるけど、実はそのファーとか結構高い。そうそう、実は結構コスト高いんですよね。で、うん、処理負荷も高いし、あんまり割には合わないキャラなんですね、うん。あれで人気がすごい高ければいいんだけど、そうでもない、ね。<笑><笑> so, Kuma, another thing that the fans picked up on because of the uniform, they, then they, they like to speculate all these little details, right? So, they were kind of speculating that、uh, Kuma, he took Heihachi's uniform and he's kind of like, Re- uh, avenge his, his master, etc. But if you think logically, there's no way that a big Kuma is going to be able to wear Heihachi's uniform. The size is totally different. So the real question is who made this uniform for Kuma, right? <laughs> 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 And then another thing is this kind of cool little side bit is that you know, people think that a bear should be pretty easy to, to make rather than a human character model. But actually, the, getting the fur and all that、yeah. uh, right. In the game is quite difficult actually behind the scenes. So, Kuma actually takes a lot of work to get、uh, to look like he should,、uh, but people don't notice. So, it's kind of like it's sad for us because you put so much de- detail into having the realistic fur and having it not slow down the game and all that. So, it's actually、uh, a lot diff- it's pretty difficult, but he's not one of the more、uh, popular characters in the game either. So, it's kind of sad for us. <laughs> so, the other redesign is Bob, who I'm sure you guys are sick of hearing about. But- He's let his hair down. What's that about? Paul. Paul, yes.、Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, that's a trick question. <laughs> <Yeah> . I was about to look at Ikeda Ike- and be like, hey, did you make Bob? I didn't hear about that. Paul, the designer. I don't know. 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 後付けの理由で言うと、敵は4の倍数でポールが<笑>髪を下ろ,ろしていくんで。はい、so, Paul, you know, if you were called Ticken 4, he had his hair down. And I love that design. So, we were talking with Nakatsu, the director, that, you know, that's, that was actually kind of popular with the foreign audience as well. Maybe we should revisit that. And then Harada's like, yeah, you know, that makes sense because every fourth installment, he could <laughs> make the hair, his hair go down. So, Perhaps in the,、uh, you know, the next Tekken 12, he'll have <laughs> hairstyle down. I can't wait for Tekken 12. <laughs>、um, so, speaking of、uh, Paul's hair, I saw a screenshot that there's ways to like, put it back to normal. Like, to the skyscraper, to yeah. Is that like, an indication of classic costumes? I'm sure you guys have been bugged on Twitter about that nonstop. Paul's hair is like, I'm going to be a little bit of 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 a little bit. まあ、クラシックコスチュームも使えるのかっていう、うんうん、もちろんあの今までのまあ他のキャラもそうだけどやっぱアイコニックあらがよかったってやつはあの割と用意してあるのでそこは心配しないで大丈夫です、うん、見れる見れる Yeah I think you can see it today but、uh, a lot of people love some of the certain iconic costumes for each of the characters so we've been、uh, careful to try and include those as much as we can as customization options Yeah. それもね、だからデザイン変えてないのに一から作り起こしてるから、うん、あのー、ね、本当は、本当は同じコストかけるのは新しい、作りたいもんね,ね、新しい衣装作りたいぐらいなのに、わざわざお金かけて古いの
作り直しているっていう意味で言うと結構お金かかってますね。It's kind of interesting because we can't reuse the assets from the past installments this time everything's created from scratch. So we have to remake the old costumes. So it's like if you're going to make something, you kind of almost think be better to make a new design, but、uh, we just realize that people love those certain costumes so much that、uh, we still have to recreate it again for Tekken 8. Uh, another, speaking of clothes, another great bit of fan service.、Uh, we saw in the latest trailer, I think it was Gamescom, Kazuya is still collecting sneakers. Like, that is such a small detail that has, that's been brought back into this. So, what is that about? Is it just like a little reference or part of the game in some way? I don't know. Sneaker, I know that's a. So, I don't know. 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 結構覚えてたりしてそれを楽しんでるのかそうあの細かい好きなもの嫌いなものとか誕生日とかを結構設定してたんだけど、ね、あれを細かくそのゲームセンターの,その LED に出したりとかやってたら、まあ、当時の設計のプログラマーのうちの何人かがすごいこんなふざけた設定おかしいだろってすごい怒り始めたんですよ。<笑>で先輩だったんでちょっと機嫌取んなきゃいけないなと思って。<笑>すいませんでしたって言って、隠してたんですよ、しばらく何年か。その先輩がいるうちは。そしたら結構ファンがなんであれ好きだったのっていうようになってきたんで、今になって復活してる感じですよ。数のやつも特に有名だよね。うん、な,なんかギャップがあるのかもしれないから人気なのかもね。そうそう。怖いやつが。そう。実はそう。俺は面白いと思ったんですけど、<笑>割とロジカルにこのことを考えるプログラマーの人が結構先輩のプログラマーが何人かすごい怒っちゃった。うん So、he's saying that you know, that's something that they used to do a lot in the earlier part of the series. They had a, a lot of these character background settings that、uh, we released, and sometimes in like, the arcades and things, you could see this. But he said that、uh, some of his senpai, you know, older programmers on the team, were like, What are you doing? That's, that doesn't make sense. It's not logical. And stop it. And because Japan, the way it works, you know, you can't like go against your senpai. So he, he just kind of hid it for a while. But now he doesn't have to do that anymore. We could、uh, bring it back because we realized that a lot of the fans were also, they actually followed that stuff. And they were like, you know, because there's a sneakerhead, why doesn't that appear anymore? So we realized that's something that the fans really liked as well. We brought it back this time for Tekken 8. Have you guys ever considered custom characters? It almost feels like too much to ask. Considering you mean like a Soul Calibur? Like, yeah, like yeah. a Creator and Soul. Like Tekken 8 already offers so much, so it almost feels like rude to say, Have you considered this massive undertaking that has ever、right. come up?、Mm. Kaiba みたいにカスタマイズだけじゃなくて、mm. その技もカスタマイズとかしたりすることは検討したかっていう質問。いや、えっと、今回、まあ、ファイターブでそれちょっとやりたかったから、ね。そうですね。あの、今回はしてないですけど、実,実は、その、えっと、鉄拳5から6にするときに、えっと、メインの技を3つの中からプレイヤーがカスタムして選べるって仕様を考えたことあります。例えば、えっと、ポールで言うと、えっと、ポ,ポンケンあ、デスフィストとか、あと、落葉とかが入ってるところに、別の技を、こう、そう3つの選択肢の中に、こう、は、え、それに、メイン技が、ポンケンか、ポンケンか、落葉か、違う違う、ポンケンか、別のバージョンのなんかこういう、小艇か、えっと、こういう、ショルダーアタックみたいな、うんうんうん、同じを、ちょっとやられとか、えっと、効果が違うもの。で、落葉もあれ下段、中段だけど、同じ下,下段、中段でも、もうちょっとリーチがあるけどダメージは弱いとか、あと、もうちょっとリーチが逆にないけど、絶対ダウン取れる技になってるとかっていう、こう、プレイヤーが自分のスタイルに合わせて選べるっていうのを一度、もう一回似てるね。そうそう、検討して、ちょっとやってみ、最初、試作でやってみたことがあったんですけど、なんか、結局、最終的にみんなが選ぶものが固定化されそうに見えたんで、わざわざこれ選ぶ人いないでしょみたいになりそうだったんで、やめ,やめたっていうのはありましたけど、だからそれ以降はあんまりそれ、試してないですね。うん。From 5 to 6, when they're thinking of、uh, something new for 6, there was the idea to change, well, allow customization of the moves to some extent. Not, not like a full create your soul, but Like,、uh, Paul might have three major moves and you could swap them out. Like, 
instead of a death fish, you might have something that uh, is a similar mid attack, but you know it has different properties. Or like the demo man, it hits low and does a mid, but maybe uh, you have something that does low and a mid, but it reaches longer. But the trade off is you do less damage or something like that. Uh, there was an the idea for that, but they thought that uh, the player base they tend to just like. When they try different things, they settle on one thing, at least in Japan, of what they think is like the proper answer. Right. And you don't see much variation, so it probably wouldn't be uh, used that much. So then they were just like, we should just make it a standard anyways. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they briefly flirted with that idea for a little bit, but that was around between five and six, and then it really never came back after that. Yeah. So, <laughs> で、海外だとネメシスって。そうだっけ。ネメシスって。え、海外アメリカとかヨーロッパで。で、そのグラディウスシステムみたいなのにしようと思った。ああ。そのあれってなんか違うじゃん。同じこう、3なんかこっちに
コンコンコンってノックしてる、リトルピーク、リトルピークって、レッドミーインっていうのがあるじゃん。あれは、実は収録したセリフじゃなくて、あのドラマの音。そのまま使ってオリジナルのドラマのあのシーンの音源をそのまま AMC の人を使わせてくれたんだよね。なんかそれぐらい彼らのノリが良かったんだけど。通常そういうことはないんだけど。So, normally you can't just use the TV、uh, voices and stuff because of all the paperwork and all、yeah. that. But、uh, for the initial trailer, we didn't have time to do the voice recording with Jeffrey D- D. Morgan. So, AMC actually got us the voice data and let us use their files for that trailer where he goes, Little pig, little pig. You know? <laughs> so, it was pretty cool. I mean, that's how cooperative they were. It was, it was incredible. I mean, again, I won't, I won't ask you, but do you think the guests in Tekken 8? It reached that level of weirdness, or you? The game is a very good one, the sort of game that can be done. Well, I know some game no, 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 no ちゃんとベースとして作ってからじゃない、できないので、鉄拳エイトは最初から別にそういうふうに考えてはやってないですよ。あの、もちろんその、その、その後に、みんながなんかいろんなことを期待し始める心の余裕がみんなにも出てくると思うんで、そういう時には何かやりたいなと思ってますけど。あとあれじゃない今作ってて余裕がないから、俺らがインプットしていろんなメディアを、うん、そうね。<笑>見てみないと、これがいいなっていうのは出てこないよね。うん、そうね。<笑> so, It's, it's tough because、um, for Tekken 8, we first have to focus on what the new game is going to be like gameplay wise, and then also with the, the Tekken cast and how they play. So for 7, it was later in post launch, so we were able to, to do some interesting challenges like that. But for 8, first we have to kind of establish the gameplay and the core cast, and then maybe post launch will then be freed up to, to do something different with guest characters. And then Also, it's, you know, it's the three of us, we usually watching some kind of movies or TV or something. They're like, oh, this is awesome. <laughs> But right now, we're just like so busy with creating Tech and Eighth that we don't have any time to consume the, the, the proper media to do that. So hopefully, when things、uh, settle down, we'll be able to find some kind of cool character that will be like, oh, man, we should do this. <laughs> so,、uh, yeah. So, final, final point for me. Do you guys have anything you want to say, you know, leading up to Tech and Launch or anything you guys want to? Yeah, that's the final point. So, what do you think about the Tekken Fine? It's a very good thing. So, I'm going to say that the Tekken Fine is a very good thing. I'm going to say that the Tekken Fine is a very good thing. I'm going to say that the Tekken Fine is a very good thing. I'm going to say that the Tekken Fine is a very good thing. I'm going to say that the Tekken Fine is a very good thing. I'm going to say that the Tekken Fine is a very good thing. I'm going to say that the Tekken Fine is a very good thing. I'm going to say that the Tekken Fine is a フルプライス払って満足できるかどうかってところはとても重要視してます。なので、あのー、僕はちょっと対戦はそんなに得意じゃない、苦手だとか、あのー、本当にうまくなれるかなとか心配してる人も、鉄拳っていうコンテンツを少しでも興味があれば、ストーリーモードであったり、ストーリーもそのキャラだけじゃなくてプレイヤーサイドのもあるし、あと、こう、鉄拳ボールみたいな遊び方もあるし、あと、ファイトラウンジに行って、みんなと喋ったりとか、みんなのゴーストと遊ぶっていう、その直接対戦しなくてもやれることはたくさんあるし、カスタマイズもあるしで、あのー、あ、なんだ、この鉄拳ってゲームは、対戦格闘って言ってるけど、このパッケージゲームとしても、とても、あの、面白い、こう、充実したコンテンツがいっぱいあるじゃないかと思ってもらえることを目指して作ってるので、そこは、ちょっとあえて強調しておきたいなと思いますね。はい。なんで、ぜひ皆さん、予約してください。はい。So he was saying that... The Tekken is,、uh, you know, it, it's always been really well known for all the different content that we have, and that there's a, a core part of Tekken that makes it unique from other fighting games that we've always uh, tried to uh, adhere to, and, and we've put a lot of focus on that. And that also, especially this time, a lot of that content that's outside of the main head to head fighting is, is more geared towards、uh, allowing people who are new to fighting games to more pick it up easily. So, even if you feel like, hey, I, I don't know, How to play fighting games.、Uh, this time, Tekken 8 might be the game that you should pick up and, and join. So, it, and, and also, another key kind of like concept or, or, or philosophy of Tekken is just that,、uh, you know, a lot of games are online now and they have all these features, but Tekken's always been about 
it's a full price package product, but oh my God, they put so many things into it, right? That's something we always try to live up to with each installment, especially for Tekken 8 this time. So it's a good time to jump in. I would say the same that, you know, I, I, used, I was a, just a button masher when I started out, right? So mm. when I joined the team, and Nakatsu, he's always made it a test of like, does Michael like this design or character or <laughs> do, can I pick up the gameplay quickly or whatever? And I, yeah, I've gotten quite good because I played the balancing team every day for a solid year before. Um, but I really understand that journey from button masher to actually being able to enjoy the chess gameplay that you see in like higher level fighting games, right? So I think this time makes it easier than ever before because you used to have to go online and you have to know what you're looking for and then you have to wade through all this garbage until you find what you're looking for. But I think uh, the team has made it so easy to pick up the game and learn the base mechanics. And you don't have to wade through a tutorial either. It's like you're having fun with the game and then you just get really uh, good at it once you've noticed. So I think that in itself should should be a good reason for people to pick it up. Plus there's a lot of cool things now that it used to be like, okay, I want to play on PC because it's the fastest or best experience or whatever. But now I think that it's an equal play experience on all the consoles and PC. So uh, it's a good time to pick up. And we have crossplay for the first time. So uh, any console you have should be your console preference to, to try out Tekken 8. Well, thank you both so much for your time. Yeah. Um, I'd just say, if what I've played, it's going to be awesome. Thank you. Yes. Appreciate that. Um,